Welcome back to our YouTube channel. The sweet yellow dress that I'm wearing here was made by my good friend Rachel. She lives in the mountains nearby and her shop is called Mountain Air Boutique. Rachel is a mother of four. Her dresses are designed in modest fashion with breastfeeding in mind, and many of them have a miniature version for daughters. I'm very inspired by Rachel because she is a proud homemaker. She tends to her home and her garden and her family as her full-time job, which every mother knows is a 24-hour workday. And at the same time, she runs a clothing business and a very popular Instagram account. I also have this dress made by another Colorado woman named Christina. This is the kind of sporty dress that you would typically see me in. Her company Wildwoods, out of Buena Vista, Colorado, has the mission of getting women outdoors with active wear in bright colors and patterns that she designs herself. Christina is an artist, a traveler, and an entrepreneur. And the coveralls that you'll see me wearing in the next scene were also made by her. I wanted to highlight both of these dresses and both of these women today because no matter the background or skill set or lifestyle, all women have incredible superpowers. And I find myself having endless things to learn from each and every woman in my life. That's all I wanted to say. I'll leave links to my friend's businesses in the description. I'm getting my hair cut. The last time I had a haircut was a month ago. I cut it myself in my friend's bathroom in Denver with these embroidery scissors that are now just miniature nose hair trimming scissors. I didn't do the best job, so I need to go have it fixed. Okay, here's my new haircut. It took her about 15 minutes and it looks identical <laughs> to uh, my own personal haircut. So we're just gonna work with this and uh, now I'm out 40 bucks. Baron's been working hard the last few days at cleaning up the construction site. It looks great. He's been organizing all the wood and pallets and now we've got a clean workspace to get started this weekend. We've got some people coming over to help us do the insulation and it should be a grand old time. Whoa, dude. Strong. Okay, Pilot is on her fifth day of her heat cycle. No, dude, don't come at me. Camp is a thirsty man. <laughs> He's just walking around air humping. She will not receive him at this time. <laughs> Once she's more fertile, she will. She'll accept him, his advances. He's acting like a thirsty little puppy right now. She's excited that he is playing. She doesn't understand what he's trying to do. I've never seen him in a full smile for <laughs> so long. Normally he stops and his eyes are just leaking. Mm -hmm. He's crying. He wants it so bad. <laughs> okay. No. Camps. And look at him. He's like he chewing on blanket. a freaking blanket. He never humps you. So horny that he's just walking around here. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? I ain't looking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen this before. I suppose it might be a little vulgar, but it's just hilarious too. 
<laughs> it just is what it is, you know? You can't. It's crazy. It's just instinct. Yeah, you can't, like, humanize I've been, it. Or right, whatever. I'm putting my human emotions to it, and I'm like, dude. Well, we're putting our human emotions to it by laughing. You know? <laughs> I don't know. It just is what it is. It's funny. Take a drink of water, thirsty boy. <laughs> This is the last time of the year that we will have to take our water jugs down the hill to the well. Now that nighttime temps are mostly above freezing, we've installed our hose back onto the well and we'll be able to pump water directly to ourselves up the hill for the rest of the summer. We're gonna put a splitter on that too so we can direct water to either the A-frame or the house. We still have to take our portable battery down the hill to the well when we wanna turn the well on. So it's still a very hands-on manual experience. Time for a little bath, a creek bath. The creek is so high. Wow. And it was frozen solid last time we were here. You gonna go first? Nope. I don't want to. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Like, I can barely stand in it. Or just cannonball? Yeah. Go for a little ride. Yeah. <laughs> we are in full, full swing working on the house. It feels very gratifying. We're really excited. That looks pretty good. Huh? We've been paused all winter long. And if you want to go see a tour of what we plan to have inside of our house, check out the last video that I made. I will put a card right here. We are really stoked to get back into the work, but it also feels quite overwhelming. This step of the build, the insulation, is a really nasty and tedious process. As a refresh, our insulation is a mixture of concrete. We add our own sand to the concrete to keep the cost down. Obviously, we need some water that we keep in these buckets so that we don't have to keep the well constantly running. We mix all of this up into a concrete mixer. Then we add pre-measured bags of recycled ground styrofoam. We wheel the mix to the location that we are filling. This is my friend Dakota. She and her husband Brady came out to help us over the weekend. and one singular bucket at a time, we pour the mix into our six inch plywood molds on the walls, tamping it down between pours. It's so much work and we are beyond grateful for all of the friends and family who've so generously donated their time to help us. <laughs> This is where we have all of our styrofoam. This is James's horse trailer, and over at his property, we ground big, huge blocks of recycled styrofoam in his big, huge wood chipper. Then he brought this trailer over here, and now this is how we are loading up our bags that go into each load of our insulation. So one bag is one load of insulation mix. The benefit of this method over something like fiberglass batting or spray foam is we will be able to apply our finishing stucco directly to this mix once it's dry because it's concrete. To stucco the other methods, we'd have to cover our entire house in expensive metal lath. Here, there's no need to apply metal lath except on the small sections of wood that frame the doors and windows. 
This will save us thousands of dollars on top of what we're already saving. We were quoted around $20,000 to spray foam our home. Obviously the superior method, but we don't have $20,000 to spare. Our recycled styrofoam was only a few hundred bucks and bags of concrete only around 600. If you were to pay people to do this method for you, that's where you'd be spending the money. Again, thanks so much to our friends and family. Another really cool benefit of this method is because each bead of styrofoam is encapsulated in concrete, the insulation is highly fire resistant. Lastly, yes, we definitely could have gone with simple batting and standard stick frame siding, but this is not a standard house. This house is going to be a thermal battery, so we needed heavy insulation on the outside. It's a monster. Each wall is gonna be around 17 inches thick when it's all said and done. Our great-great-grandchildren will have an amazing time enjoying this home once we're long gone. Came inside to grab some water. When we do this, my boogers turn into just straight concrete. <laughs> Activated by my snot. It's really satisfying to uh, take care of them. <laughs> oh. Here we took the windows out that we had put in in order to determine where the center block separators would go. That day it got really windy, so we came back on this day to glue in the windows and secure them completely. I think this section would be a good time to explain where my mind's been at with all of this, this build. James was over here yesterday at our house talking about how when you let go and let life unfold for you, when you stop resisting and eliminate the things that you don't want in your life, everything becomes fluid and easy. And it's true, we've definitely experienced that before. But to this I asked, how can I let go and stop resisting the intense challenge of especially this insulation process? Guilt is one of the lowest vibrational emotions that we can have, and I've been experiencing it almost every day if I'm not working on the house. It's kind of why I've not been as active on YouTube, because this huge life-altering project is looming like a really steep mountain over the top of my head, and I can't see the summit. Fuck. Is it not gonna fit now? So how, I asked, do I let go when I feel so consumed by this workload? He said, first, I cannot let my work control me. I control the work. I am in charge of my energy, not the work. If my work consumes me, it's my choice. And I don't want that to be my choice. Second, the only option is to stay in the present moment. Zoom in, not out. Look at the task directly in front of me. We learned this last fall, but I guess I kind of forgot. Do not look at the entire expanse of the project. You got to take it day by day or even moment by moment. I can't look at the entire house and everything that we have to do. All I can do is look at what we have to do right now. And that pep talk really helped me out a lot. Thank you, James. So we'll rotate the top up. What you we maybe need to put on music to go like so much. <laughs> so you can be. Okay, we'll just tilt it up onto its bottom. Okay. Yes. Aaron just got back with a truckload of sand. And we mix the sand up with the stucco mix that has no sand in it. It's just a far cheaper way of doing things. It's a lot of sand. This is $10. $10? Dang. Isn't that crazy? That's very crazy. It's got a lot of grit in it. Like it's not exactly a fine sand, sandbox so sand. So heavy.
see it's pretty gritty, not sandbox material, but perfect for insulation material. Back in the, uh, ooh, oh, beautiful sky. It's past sunset and I'm back in the trailer loading up some foam. Today's been quite a long day. All of these days have been quite long days. Building a house is something that I have had as a bucket list, total just dream thing in my mind for so many years. Like who ha build your own house. This phase of the process is very challenging. And when I get overwhelmed, I just have to come back to the fact that this is, this is part of like, this is part of that run where you're like, maybe I should just turn around. Or this is part of the bike ride where you're trying to get up to the top of the hill and you're not quite there yet and your legs hurt and whatever. Like this is the, probably not the, the crux. I'm sure things are gonna continue to be pretty hard. But is the view never not worth it? Like when you reach the peak and get to see everything that you've done, when is that ever not worth it? I can't believe that we get to do this. I cannot believe it. It uh, almost like it kind of brings tears to my eyes. I think I'm just... <laughs> so many emotions. It's really hard, very hard work. That's making me very strong and it's teaching me so many things. Hoo -ha! Hoo! It's great. It's mostly great. It's hard, but it's great. Okay, I just wanted to say that. Good morning. We're on our way into the woods, into the mountains to meet James and Doreen and family. We've got four kayaks in the back. Wow. We haven't been kayaking yet this year, and it's just so cool to us that we can fit four of these folding kayaks, Oru kayaks, in the back seat. And we can talk to the camera in the car because it's not as loud as the Subaru. Have we, we haven't even yeah, officially we said that oh, we got a new car. Yeah. Well, new to us. It's 20 years old. <laughs> it's literally 20 years old. It's an 03 Lexus GX 470. We bought it from somebody who lived near us. And it's been so far the perfect car. It's got 200,000 miles on it and rock sliders and full skid plates. And basically just the simple things that I would have done, bigger tires and nicer wheels. And... Yay! We still will keep the Subaru. It's just slightly unreliable. She's an old girl and she's been through a lot. We have put that car through so much and we've been able to go so many places because of that car. And it's got over a quarter million miles on it. So a few weeks ago, I was just in Denver getting the car worked on at TGA down in this Colorado Springs and decided that it would really be nice to have a second car so that if there's one, if there's anything wrong with one of them, then we're not just stranded. Because when I went into the front range, I had to leave Elsa just with just our farm truck that you wouldn't want to drive very far. We put in a lot of work this weekend with our new friends, Dakota and Brady and Baron's parents. So I'm really stoked that today we're gonna take a day off and enjoy the mountains. Our kayaks. Yay, kayaks. Can you have motors on there? I've had dreams where like I either got a haircut or lost all my hair and I was kind of sad. So I wonder if I'll be sad. Part of the reason that you let it grow out in the first place was because we were living in the scamp and to go get haircuts all the time was just inconvenient. Mm -hmm. Well, and I liked having long hair. This is going to feel so good. Are you going to do yours? I mean, Jill made me consider it, but... I still have a lot of confidence issues with my hair. So to 
I'm not ready for that. Mm -hmm. God damn, last Monday we bought a car. This Monday we buzz your head. What are we doing next Monday? Oh wait, it's Tuesday. Never mind. <laughs> wow, this is not the best look the way it is. <laughs> I'm trying not to look at it and just do it. I don't want to go over your side burns. Yeah, I'll do those. I'm trying to be very careful. Treat it like art and I feel like you'll do a really good job. <laughs> we'll have to do this like once every couple weeks. That's fine. It's way easier than cutting long hair. Because I'd like to keep it really short. Why? I don't know. I think it looks better. It was like almost bald short when I met you. Yeah. That looks real good. It feels mm. nice. Mm. It's weird, it's not like... Wow, you look good. I feel like oh, when... Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like when my hair was shorter and I buzzed it, it felt like I could feel the air coming through it more than I can right now. Well, it just feels like you have, you can really feel the wind on your head, but for some reason I don't feel that as much. Have you always had a mole on top of your head? Yeah. Hace frio. Now you just need like a little mm -hmm. touch of. Oh, yes. Just a little bit. Wow, I want to do this to my head. Wow. Damn. It feels so nice. I bet. I have no regrets. No regrets. I guess we gotta remember you don't have a microphone on. I have no regrets. <laughs> Hop up in your chair, buddy. You can't go out there. You wanna go outside? No, you don't. Are you sure? Hold Harry, see if he'll go. Oh, oh, <laughs> Camp, come. Come on. You're getting pelted. No, no, no. Hey, no. Come on, let's get a treat. Hop in. And with these silly dogs, we will say goodbye for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.